what's going on everybody everyone hates tesla let's get active today we're going to go inside the battery inside the cyber cell tesla cyber truck 4680 battery tear down shout out to sandy monroe we're going to give them a like always give them a like when you're watching their channel let's get active let's get started hey boys and girls welcome back to monroe live I'm here with Tom Prucha, and we're gonna today talk a little bit about batteries. Okay, so you'll notice that I don't have gloves on because we use them all up. And the last pair is, uh, <clears throat> is on Tom here. And Tom will be doing all the picking up. Now, for those of you who really know about batteries, you'll know that there's dust associated with these things that's probably not the best thing in the world to suck into your lungs. Um, that there's and the vapors. That and the vapors. Well, the vapors are gone. We don't have to worry too much about that, but now we've got dried chemicals that uh, we're not going to be really excited about uh, swallowing or breathing. So don't expose yourself to these batteries trying to be at home and be Bill Nye the science guy. Leave it to the experts, okay? And then also leaving it to the experts, leave your legal advice to the experts also. This is for educational and informational use only. So what we have is a lot of noisemaker over here. This is our ventilation system. So uh, we have a cross breeze going in here. We've got it outside of the bags so you can see what's going on, but that's about it. We're not gonna be, uh, we're not gonna be uh, fondling these things too much. And as soon as this is over, they go back in their little plastic bags and uh, they go back into their box. So in, in short translation, please don't try this at home. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't try this at home. This is not- Yeah, basically. Uh, this is not for the, uh, this is not for the faint of heart, number one, and definitely not for amateurs. So anyways, um, uh, Dr. Tom here is going to tell us a little bit about <clears throat> um, what these different things are. That's how we're gonna start off. People wanna know what's anode, what's cathodes, what's collectors, on and on. And Tom's gonna give you a quick um, explanation on that. And then we're gonna go in to show you the differences between the old 4680 battery and the new one. And uh, guys, why is this important? It's very important if you're invested into a company to understand the product. Not only just understand the product to how it appears as a final product, meaning the Cybertruck or just the Model 3, you have to dig deep inside the car and seeing what's the difference of the battery that's the new 4680 between the old one really allows you to understand, hey, what are they changing, right? Gen 1 and Gen 2. Gen 1 is the Model Y and this Gen 2 is what's in the Cybertruck. So yeah, those are different cars and they came out in different times, you know, Cybertruck being the later one and the recently released vehicle. But what else have they changed their ways of actually creating the battery? And that's what we're exploring here. Between the old 4680 battery and the new one. This episode of Monroe Live is sponsored by T-Reps. T-Reps makes premium aftermarket accessories. Uh, 2022 Model Y structural pack uh, a little over a year ago. And I have one of the cells from that pack here as a show and tell item. You can see that it's still got some of its uh, characteristic pink foam in place. What we like to call the pink foam of death because it still gives us fond memories. Um, no, it doesn't. It gives us <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> Definitely not phone. And here's one from the Cybertruck. And one thing I should note about the one from the Cybertruck is that this would be unique, I think, in the business right now in that this one actually is still charged. So that being the case, yes, we found a way to attract live cells, and it is a exciting process, and we now know how to do it. But we well, also, actually, you know, while we're talking about this, um, you'll notice that, yes, this is still live, but this is not one that we're going to do complete testing on. And the reason for that is because it slightly leaked. It's slightly. got a little dent in the bottom, too, yeah. from, from the extraction process. The yeah. others we've extracted haven't got that dent, but we have others that are right. in line. So it seems like the process of even getting these batteries out to kind of be able to examine them could be a damaging process to the batteries in itself. But of course they did a good job. Monroe team is always breaking things down and getting us the information that we need. And this information, if you're combing through it, it's gonna be very important for you to sit back and say, hey, what is this company doing to improve? Are the products getting better or are they getting worse? Are they cutting corners? or are they being more effective and efficient? And obviously from what we see right here is things 
are becoming more effective and efficient. And these are independent parties. All right. These are not people who work for Tesla. And so they're lying. <laughs> you know, they're not. They're just consultants. Line for electrical testing as everyone is hoping to hear the results. Of. Yes. And the reason that we don't have um, a whole bunch of ones that have the little ball bearings gone is because I value my customers. Well, I value my customers, too, but I value our people here at Monroe. So with that as, uh, as a starting point. So, yes, the, um, the fundamental differences are pretty clear between the first generation 4680 and the second generation. Uh, you can't really tell very much from the top, but from the bottom, it's a very obvious difference. You can see this has got a little pop rivet device. This has a ball bearing underneath this uh, material if you scrape it away, but that serves as the primary vent function, if you will. Uh, internally, there's some additional. Okay, so one serves as a vent function, but you don't need the pall bearer of the, uh, and then the rivet right there. That's pretty interesting. Components in this one in that there is a, uh, a copper tab at the bottom that collects everything together and makes the electrical connection to the can. They've eliminated that in the Gen 2 version in favor of these little welds that you see here instead. We did notice that. Uh, it okay, so you subtract the copper and then you leave this main build out which will be like let's say one material and then you make these different type of indents or it dents into the actual battery and <laughs> you get the same thing versus having the copper and then having to get the supply you know to, ugh, do the quality control for that 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 could be a nightmare just for a small uh, you know ring around the bottom uh, in the cells that we have there is both the nine weld version like this one two here one there three of each type there is another type of cell that's about evenly mixed within the battery that has 12 welds per cell. So it's just three additional welds. Uh, we don't want to call that a difference. It may be a one and change. And this kind of shows you up close what that is. So those welds are going through the end cap. There's your ball bearing at the center. And the uh, oils from the anode are directly welded to this cap, whereas there's an intermediate device on the Gen 1 that handles that functionality. So that's a, a, a reduction in components, a reduction in cost. And reduction in components and reduction costs. Good. Now, if you were marking that on real estate, if you could reduce the cost of your electricity, reduce the cost of electricity by adding solar panels, then you would put that onto the sheet, right? And that would change your operating expense. So at the end of the year, your profits will change because you reduce the cost of said product, which would be real estate. And in this instance, it would be actually the product of the car. And it made more space in the cell that gave them the ability to increase their energy density, which our tests should hopefully confirm. Uh, Tesla has come out and made some declarations about the uh, improvement they've made in energy density. So we applaud that and we look forward to confirming it for them and telling you what the numbers are as we test it. So that said. And that's good. So Tesla, once again, a lot of people in the space say that they're always lying. <laughs> they're never telling the truth about a particular product or whatever. So net net, these guys are going back and double checking it and saying, okay, We'll see if what they said is accurate to what we're going to actually find in this investigation. So they go through the car, comb through it, review it, and say, hey, that's known to be right or that's inaccurate, et cetera. What's on the inside? Um, you saw the end cap. So the end cap, now we're moving into the inside. The top half, the, the upper side of the cell, what we call the cathode, still has this sort of plate that brings all of the... Um, flower tabs together from the jelly roll okay, on so the anode side. Why don't we, okay, good. Anode right, so side. I'm just yeah. saying that that part gets welded to this and then this part gets attached to the center electrode that is the positive tab of the cell. Okay, so they want to show us a little advertisement. Nobody, so, nobody wants that. Let's talk about these jelly rolls. There are two, all right. Every living mind battery has five basic components. It has anode, it has a cathode, it has a separator, it has an electrolyte and it has an enclosure. So we've seen the enclosure. That's not anything to really get too excited about. Um, but the jelly rolls are very similar in appearance between the Gen 1 and Gen 2. But we know through our analysis that the cathode side is significantly different. Um, they've all but eliminated the cobalt from this part of the jelly roll. And um, what's left is a very small amount of cobalt and mostly nickel. So it's still on an, an aluminum foil. We are talking. Yeah, I remember them saying about reducing that and going towards nickel. So there we go. 
talking about the energetic materials that are applied to the aluminum foil. Um, on the cathode side, we haven't really done a deep dive there, but we know that in the Gen 1, they used a lot of synthetic graphite. So we're expecting more of the same here. And again, this is the so-called flower tab arrangement that makes the 4680 somewhat unique in the business because instead of having one tab that brings all the current through one little um, very narrow opening that gets hot, we have a very wide opening that is conducive to uh, lots of power and um, you know numerous connections that used to be much smaller in the smaller cells we've always dealt with in the past. So okay, so other industries or other car makers in the industry or anybody utilizing it uses a single tab and in this 4680 they use multiple tabs which increases its efficiency man this is a key word to a lot of things that they're doing on the ground when it comes down to these products efficiency. So, there's a separator that is um necessary between the cathode and the anode because if they touch each other there's a short circuit and bad things will happen so this has a very important job of allowing the ions to pass through it using the electrolyte as a carrier, uh, but it also serves this important purpose of keeping the two separate from one another so they don't short circuit and cause calamity. So not really a lot to be excited about with the separator. Um, it looks very similar to the other one. We will be doing some analysis to prove that for certain. Um, but beyond that, the electrolyte is uh, uh, something interesting. We've had a chance to take a look at that. We haven't had a chance to analyze it yet. Uh, maybe some differences there, we're not sure. So that said, um, the positive terminal, what is the cathode, looks almost identical. In fact, they have the same sort of dime-shaped tab at the very top. There's a, a rubberized gasket underneath it, and they look very similar to one another. But I will tell you that the one on the Cybertruck appears to be more frail just by casual observation. So that said, we are you know, frustrated in taking out cells and getting them so that they're leak-free, dent-free, and suitable for electrical test. Okay, so he's saying it seemed like it's a little bit more frail, and they're you know, getting a little frustrated with taking those batteries out and taking them out leak dent free and everything else but since we've done it we know how to do it we'll do more of it so that's the fundamentals you charge the lithium-ion battery uh, by placing the um the ions as they were um into the anode where the graphite collects it and then upon discharge those ions move back across from the anode back to the cathode and that's where it delivers discharge current so um charging collects in the anode, discharging, it moves away from the anode, goes back to the cathode, and it continues to go back and forth through the charge-discharge cycle life of the cell. So that said, um, we know with some certainty that the anode has more silicon. Um, we didn't find any silicon in the Gen 1 cell, but we did find some in this one. So we're hesitant to give you an exact number, but suffice to say, they did get some silicon in the anode, and there should very well be an increase in energy density from that change alone. We believe there's also so increase in energy density due to the silicon being added to it. Very interesting. I'm not a scientist, so continue, my guy. There are differences that will facilitate incremental increases in energy density as well. But with some certainty here, we at least have seen the silicon that they've said that they would have. And here it is. So with that. Um, well, there's, there's one other thing that I think we should toss out there. Um, uh, word has it that. Normally, there are three components that you look at inside of a, inside of a battery for metals. Nickel is the big one, and then there's magnesium, manganese, manganese, manganese and, um, and then the last one is cobalt. That's all right. I would have messed it up too, Sandy. Keep going. Cobalt is the last one. Okay. Cobalt's used primarily to inhibit fires. Um, these batteries appear to be a little different in that there's nickel and there's cobalt, but no manganese. manganese. So we speculate that this has got something to do with the dry electrode process. Manganese as a material isn't generally as in short supply as some of the other materials we worry more about. So it's interesting that they eliminated it. So they had to have a process reason for doing so because it was probably not cost or performance driven. Um, but certainly one of the big things they were trying to achieve is the dry electrode process on both the cathode and the anode. And as you may recall, they only achieved it on one side in the last uh, cell design. So whatever the magic is that's allowed for them to do that. And we have high confidence we will find it to be a dry process for both this time. However that worked, uh, it looks like eliminating. Okay, so maybe it was possibly for the dry process, which will help when it comes down to producing the cars, right? The dry process in time for reduction of time frame that it had to spend on the assembly line or being manufactured in general. So, okay. Well, let's just say the battery being manufactured in general. Mang manganese helped with that somehow. This end cap is a unique piece. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's got a metal reinforcement around the perimeter. So there's Move these in. little pop rivet looking devices here that attach the can to that reinforcing ring. But what we know from one of our competitors' videos is that when the vent lets loose, 
uh, this ball comes out as a norm, and that would be a projectile with the pressure that it would take to push that out of there. So you don't want to be in the way of that thing. Um, and if that doesn't work, like a lot of other cells we've seen, and particularly in the prismatics where they have a designated vent function, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes the pressure profile is such that you don't get the designated vent to let loose and something else lets loose instead. And we know that in the case of this cell, when that happens, that it breaks this uh, perforation around the perimeter. You can hardly see it, but there it is where my thumb line is. It's sort of triangular in shape. That whole piece pops out when the pressure profile is right. And it's, you could call it a secondary vent function, a uh, primary vent, uh, secondary vent, a, uh, a little vent and a big one, however you want to word it. But it yeah, matter. okay, to relieve that pressure. So you want to have that projectile launching about. So interesting. See, <laughs> and people don't think manufacturing a car is complicated, right? Oh, why didn't the car drop? It should have dropped the last year. It's always late. You see how complex this is? And we are manufacturing our own batteries as a reminder. We're not getting them from nobody else for the most part. It does appear to have two intended vent functions. And they're both at the bottom, which is where we would have predicted them to be, given the fact that they allocated all that space at the bottom of the pack, as you see in the background there, to evacuate those gases from the battery pack when such an event occurs. So that was the last thing. And now we're done. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Stay tuned to Monroe Live. Bye. Hey, thanks, Monroe. See, guys, what am I always telling you? The process is very complicated. And just watching these small videos, 15 minutes, not that much of the breakdown of the car, just allows you to learn more about the product. Knowing more about the product would help you when it comes down to making an investment, not only just in Tesla per se, but any other company, right? If they're showing you that, if there's out here, you know, if there's people out here reviewing the product like that and breaking it open and seeing how it's more effective and efficient is something that an average short trader or let's say somebody is a short-term investor, might not be looking at. And so having this arbitrage of information will allow you to kind of have the edge on everybody else, to have an access and understanding the product a little bit better. So when you're making an investment in any company, right, you know more than most. You know how complicated it is. And then you're saying, wow, this company is still creating a more effective and efficient product, even with all these moving pieces. That sounds pretty easy to me, right? But everyone loves to hate Tesla. So what? They say the delivery date is late. Not understanding how complex it's not only just to manufacture the car, but also manufacture the batteries. Batteries in the machine, the heart, the energy. Gotta love it. Well, this has been a great one. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can know when the next hot ether comes out. And we will review. Now, guys, I could review, let's say Tesla, and I could review, you know, what the financial media is always saying on a daily basis about the stock and counter those narratives. But I think there's a lot of people in space doing that. Shout outs to solving the money problem. You can go check out his videos. But I want to dive into the company a little bit and have that information there so that I could just address that, bring you great people like Sandy Benro. And also, you know, solving a money problem, everybody else out there that's covering Tesla provides information too. So we're all providing information. And so you can look inside one of the greatest American companies, the United States of America and in the world, and understand what's going on under the hood, behind the tabloids and the clickbait. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. Nothing new. See you guys on the next one.